for vegans, though. <laughs> Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the fourth Sunday of the month, which means it's time for the plant-based kitchenista, Chef Kelly Williamson, and she's going to be making, just in time for Easter, some delicious, healthy, vegan Easter recipes. Please welcome her back to the show. Hi, Kelly. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. So what, what constitutes an Easter recipe? What makes Easter? I'm, I'm Jewish. So i you know, what makes yeah. Easter Easter? You know, I think it's, I think it's all about, truthfully, I think it's about family. So I think it's, it's making things that your family like that want to get around the table and spend time together. So, you know, it could be something that, I mean, I guess some people would look at it as like, it's a whole big to do. It's like almost like the other holidays and stuff where you have to make all these things. But I think Easter really is about spending time with family and making sure, you know, if you have kids that want to do, um, you know, the egg hunts and things like that, that they have fun with that. So having recipes that are more that are like easy, but actually delicious and that you could have, you know, ready. And if people kind of they eat a little here and they eat a little there, that's what it's about to me. So that's kind of what I looked at is like having, you know, I love roasted vegetables and I think that's good any time of the year, but I think adding something that's a little special, maybe it's like the, the mushroom and leek and it has actually has green peas pie and it's pretty, I think just adds that little extra kind of festivity and stuff to the, to the occasion. Nice. And, and, you know, you can do, you don't have to do diet um, Easter eggs because that's an animal product. Is there, is there something that they can do that's vegan, but give the kids that craft kind of idea? Yep. I mean, you can do, you know, there's all the little, so they've got like, like little styrofoam eggs that everybody can decorate because, you know, there's all these things now, like you can get like sequins and fun things like that, or you can even actually paint them. There's plaster pears, there's that, you know, just the plastic eggs and all that. So instead of, you know, going out and buying that 12, you know, 12 dozen eggs and, and uh, boiling them up and doing that and having them go to waste, there's all so many other things that you can do. Plus I've seen where actually somebody will take, um, they, they put like little bags together and they'll have like the, you know, like the vegan chocolate and the vegan candies in it. And they'll wrap them up with the bows and they hide those around, which is really fun too. So I think there's many different ways to experiment and have fun without having to do the eggs. Yeah. So. It's weird how, how all the holidays, like, you know, Christmas and Pas uh, uh, Hanukkah are around the same time. And there's parallels yep. to those holidays and Easter and Passover both involve hiding something and yep. Passover. We hide the matzah. It's called the afikom. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's just so interesting how these traditions get started. And, and that's what the fun is. It's not about eating a dead animal, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, my wedding anniversary is on Easter, so we're just go we're going to go to my oh, favorite nice. one of my favorite vegan restaurants. It's called Faux Fresh, and he makes SOS free food. So that's what I'll be doing on Easter. So I'm curious what you're going to be making on Easter. I actually will probably be making a lot of the roasted vegetables. Um, so we'll probably go over to Jerry's daughter. So Jerry's usually with me. He's the he's the plant based nutritionist, and so she always makes the normal, you know, everything that we don't talk about. Um, so we always do all the side dishes and it used to be like way back. So probably 15 years ago, we would bring our own things and then she would make her things for her part of the family. And then she tasted, she tasted all ours and she's like, you know what, forget it. I'm not making the sides or anything else anymore. I'm letting you do everything else. And I'll do, you know, if I need to make the ham or the turkey or something like that up for the other family members, then that's what she does. So we will be doing the roasted vegetables. I'll do a really fun dessert. I always make a salad that's usually about this big. And it's about that deep. Um, the reason why is we eat the salad for, you know, whatever we're eating and stuff. But then Dawn, who's the daughter-in-law and stuff, loves to take it. So she takes almost the rest of the salad, packs it up for the rest of the week and stuff, and then loves it. So probably do that. And then I would say probably add a couple more dishes with here. I may make the pie just as a side dish, or I may make like, I may make like a vegan meatloaf. I may do something like that. I haven't quite figured it out yet. Sometimes we just go way off base and we'll do lasagna, spinach lasagna and salads or something. It's kind of like for Easter, the way I look at it is what do you feel like eating? It doesn't have to be specific. It's like, what do you feel like? And then celebrate that. Nice. Have you ever been to a Passover Seder? I have not. They mm -hmm. actually are having a Passover kind of a dinner um, over here at our clubhouse and stuff, which I don't know what they're doing. Actually, I think they're having it catered, but no, I've never been. I would love to. Well, the only reason I say is because you're so creative in creating recipes that I bet you could make some of those very healthy. I mean, things like a filter fish, matzo ball soup, yes. you know, think, mm -hmm. I bet you could figure out how to do it vegan and delicious. So if yeah. you get a chance to go, go so that you can next year make us a vegan Seder. 
we'll do it. That'll be, right. that'll be on my goal list. All right. So what's your first recipe today? So I'm going to make a mushroom and leek pie. I actually added green peas to it just because I love peas in some, you know, it's like when it's kind of a casserole pie, peas really hold up really well. So I added that in. But think about this as a base. You've got the mushrooms and you've got the leeks. And let's say you don't have leeks. You can't find them in the store because that was very difficult here in, in Colorado this, this weekend. But if you don't have that, then you can always use, you know, the scallions or onions. But then think about, well, maybe I want to add some broccoli. Maybe I want to add some cauliflower. Maybe I want to add something completely different, potatoes in it. That's what you can do with this. It's like make it your own, but I'm giving you the base so that you can add all the different ingredients. It's almost like, you know, think about it too. You can make it for, if you make it for Easter, clean out your refrigerator. So if you have all kinds of different vegetables in there, like your cauliflower, your broccoli, your zucchini, add it all together and put it into the pie. So that's an easy way to make it. Yum. All so right. the second one, second one I'm going to do is rosemary roasted potatoes, favorite in the world. Um, granddaughter absolutely loves these. She calls them, she says it's like eating candy. So she actually takes the, the little potatoes and she does them as poppers. So she's always like, anytime you come over, you need to make the rosemary roasted potatoes. I'm like, I can show you how to make them. She's like, no, 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 <laughs> just bring them over. So we are going to make those, which is really, really good. Wait, you have a granddaughter? You don't look old enough. I we do. We do. So it's, uh, she is. Well, she's step, step, so step granddaughter, but she's 19 and she just got back from eight weeks in Europe with a friend of hers, which gave us all heart attacks just because, you know, when you're sending a 19, you know, two 19 year old girls into Europe and they go in, they went to probably, I think it was, what was it? 20 countries and two months or something. But I think they end up going like 16 countries. And it was just like every day you're like, okay, please call us, please text us, please let me let us know you're okay. You know, cause you hear all these stories and things happening, but she did it and loved it. And what a great experience did it for under, we think under for under 10 grand. We haven't, we don't know exactly yet, but that's the money she saved. Wow. Cool. Yeah. yeah so, so she's back, which is good. So we're all good about that. And then I'm going to make ra um, rainbow. So roasted rainbow carrots with pistachio relish. So it's more about the carrots being roasted and then just adding a little bit of, of decoration and flavor on the side. So we're going to be doing that, which is a really pretty dish. Once you put that out in front of everybody, I guarantee you they're going to grab the carrots, but at the same time as they're going to be dishing off the pistachio relish. So just things that are a little bit different and just adding kind of a little bit of, I guess, um, I guess, flair to some of the dishes that may be something that you eat during the day or during the week that you make, but you want to add that little bit extra flair and stuff when you're serving it to friends and family. Nice. Can't wait to see you make this. Great. All right. So I'm going to get, so there's a couple of things that I'm going to get started. So I've got the rosemary, I've got the roasted potatoes. So what I did yesterday, because they usually take about 40, 45 minutes to, you know, to roast up in the oven. And we only have an hour today with each other. So I didn't figure you wanted to spend from like nine to noon with me. So what I did yesterday is I just steamed up the potatoes. So they're just the little fingerling potatoes. Um, you can grab, you know, any type that you want but you want them like the little small, almost like bite size. Cause like I said, these are, as the granddaughter says, these are like poppers. And so she grabs them, just eats them right out of the dish. So I kind of mix the red potatoes, yellow potatoes in here. So it just adds a little bit of, of flair to them, but they are steamed till al dente. And then that way, when I roast them in the oven here for us, they're not going to take that long. So you could do that the day before is steam them up, roast them the day of, which saves you a little bit of time. Also saves you some up, you know, oven space. If you only have one oven, um, but otherwise, if you've got time, roast them out because they're even better if you just sit there and let them roast out. So what we're going to do is we're going to add vegetable broth to them to roast them. So I'm just going to just put a little vegetable broth. So one thing to always remember is vegetable broth burns off really quickly. So it's not like when you used to cook with oil. So like when, you know, I remember with my mom and stuff, you know, we would do, we do like, I don't know, like um, caramelized onions and you know, you could, you could put the oil in it and you'd mix it all up and you'd go do some laundry. You'd come back, you'd walk around the block and your onions are still simmering in the oil because it doesn't burn off as fast unless you've got it really high heat. So, but vegetable broth, you do, you could do all that and walk back and it's starting to burn on your pan. So one thing I like to do is when I'm making um, things with vegetable broth, but I won't do it on this one is I'll usually cut it with water. So I'll do like half vegetable broth or water or just all water. And then that way it holds a little bit longer. But this recipe, one of the things when you're roasting it out, when you've got the vegetable broth in there, you can just actually just kind of, you know, peek it, peek underneath it, the parchment paper and the aluminum foil, and then check and see if it's starting to burn off. Just add a little bit more vegetable broth. That's all you need to do. So then dried rosemary. So you could do fresh rosemary also. 
So, but easy to keep, of course, dried rosemary in your, in your cabinets. So you just sprinkle that on. As much or as little as you'd like. A little bit of ground pepper, black pepper. And then parchment paper first. Oops, I dropped some. And then aluminum foil. That way you're keeping the aluminum away from your food, but it also gives that conductivity and stuff to start roasting everything out. So that's it, gonna go in the oven. So I've got the oven, so it says on the recipe 350, but I'm kind of going in between all recipes of the heat that I need. So right now I've got it on 380. So it's not gonna take as long. And especially since they're already, um, they're already steamed, it's not gonna take as long either. So I'm gonna put them in the oven and get them ready. Um, the nice thing about it too is like right before we get ready to, to, to bring them out and serve them, you can take the, the parchment paper and the aluminum foil off and then let them roast and kind of toast a little bit more, which is really nice. Nothing better than roasted rosemary potatoes that get a little crispy on the sides. But if they're all soft and you can't get them crispy, they're just as good. All right, so then, so I can just get some stuff in the oven. Rainbow carrots. How many times do we go in the stores, never buy the rainbow carrots? They're absolutely beautiful. I mean, look, if you look at it, look at the colors of these. So you've got the purple. And if you actually slice into the purple, you can't really see it. I was trying to see if you could see it on this, but if you slice into them um, and you start like shaving them off and make like a, a sliced carrot salad, they actually come up and there's yellow on the inside of these. And then you've got some of the kind of like the beige white ones and the yellow ones, and they've got some of the purple on them and then the orange. So I did the same thing yesterday because they do take a while to roast up in the oven. But if you have the time, roast them 100% just right in the oven and don't worry about them. But I actually steamed them a little bit to al dente. So these are ready to go for me to add the vegetable broth. And if you think about this, these are things that you could make the day before. So instead of getting, so I always talk about this, that, you know, when you've got, when you're in, um, you know, it's like Thanksgiving time and stuff and everybody gets up real early on Thanksgiving morning. I remember my mom getting us up at like 6 a.m. You know, and you were, you know, back in that days, you were cleaning the turkey, you were doing all those things, you had to get everything ready. And it just seems like by the time it hit dinner time to sit down with everybody, you were exhausted. And so what I always say is if you've got things like this and you can make ahead of time and then just heat up, it's a great thing to do. It keeps the stress off of you. And cooking is about trying to alleviate the stress, not create stress for yourself. All right, so I've got these in here, so I'm not going to add any salt, but I've got the black pepper. Just got a little bit there. All right, and then we're going to do, we're actually, I'm going to leave these, I'm going to leave these uncovered, and so I'm going to put these in the oven and start getting these all roasted up. Two things down. All right, so we will make, let's go ahead and make the relish. Um, and then I'll do that here in a second, but I'm going to get the mushroom and leek pie ready to go. So I have a question for you, Chef AJ. If you can ask the audience, what do they fix for their uh, Easter holiday? That's What's a great question. Thing? Guys, please type it in the chat. Those of you that celebrate, what do you fix and prepare for your Easter holiday? Go right now and I'll read the answers to Kelly. The purple carrots, I think, taste better. I don't know if it's psychological because it's my favorite color, but they do taste better to me. Yeah, they are really good. They're all, we used to, we actually had a class probably about a month ago and we had a rainbow carrot. It was, um, so we basically shaved the carrots. So they were just the raw carrots and shaved them down and put them into this big salad with arugula and dressing and stuff. And so we had these long strips of, of the, the fresh carrots and it had like the purple ones with the purple and the yellow. Oh my gosh, that was the most beautiful salads that we'd ever seen. Lots and lots of carrots, which are good for you. Of course, good for eyes, good for everything else. So let me grab the next dish. All right. So you can see all the different things. We always talk about, wouldn't it be nice if you're, you know, you're getting ready to make something um, and you're, you know, you've got everything that's all chopped up and ready for you to go. So it's like, yay, nice. But this is kind of things that I do the night before so that it's just easier for to make, to make the recipes and keep things going. So, all right. So we've got leeks. So let me talk a little bit about, let's pause this really quick. So leeks. I'll actually grab one because I can show you a little bit better. Leeks are wonderful. 
very much an onion flavor. Sometimes if they, it depends on, and I think it's a lot of it has to do with uh, the supply chain and things like that right now. Sometimes they tend to be really like, like almost too much. And it's like your eyes and you're crying, just like a, a really um, potent type of an onion. But these were really mild. One thing that you'll notice when you get them, I mean, there's, there tends to be a lot of waste on the, on the, the tips because you're not using that. This can be really, really tough to eat. So one of the things when you look at it, you know, if you've got pieces that are coming off like this, you know, just go ahead and peel them off. But when you do that, you'll notice, look at all the dirt. Leeks are something that keep a lot, they hold a lot, a lot of dirt. So when you're chopping them up, one of the things that you want to do is you can take, you know, take the end piece off. And then if you don't want to have all the greens, you know, you can cut it down to where it's just like about to about there. And then when you start chopping it up, you want to put it into a large, like a bowl like this. And then you want to just, once you start the slices, you want to just run water over it and just keep running. Or if you have like a, um, a strainer or something like that, you just want to keep, you know, running the water over them because even the slices, you know, so even this white part and things like this hold dirt, especially when you get up into here. So one of the things I always do is like I slice up to here and then I'll see, you'll see this here where the, the leaves are here. I'll actually peel that off. And then I'll just keep chopping up. And so I'm trying to keep the really tough parts away. But then look at it's like I said, look at the dirt, lots and lots of dirt on these. So you can wash them really, really well. But the same thing is put them in a bowl and then wash your leeks again, because you will find no matter what, even when you're chopping, that you're going to have little chunks of dirt. So I know dirt's not good, you know, it's good for you. And there's a lot of people that say, leave the dirt on. But in a leek pie, I'd rather not have the dirt. So, you know, but some places like Trader Joe's, you can buy cleaned leeks, you know, they have you sure can. Too, and I love those because they're not dirty. Yep. If you can find them, that's what, you know, we, we were having a hard time, like sprouts and everything else did not have them this, this year. They were saying they were, they were like, oh, well, sorry, we were supposed to get a truck in, weren't coming in. So Jerry finally found them, I think at Natural Grocers is where he found them. So yeah, but you can buy them already done too, which is really nice. All right. Let's start this up. All right, so I'm going to put the leeks in. So just nice little thin slices when they, they'll actually come apart. So you'll see that, that, that you can just kind of put them apart like this. But when you start stirring them up and saute them, that works too. If you don't have leeks, if somebody says, mm, I don't want to do leeks, I don't want to have to go buy it, then you could just do, you know, you can do, um, you know, like your scallions, you could do a, like a white onion, you could do um, all kinds of different things. So you don't have to buy the leeks if you want to change it out just a little bit. This is about showing you different recipes, but then having you turn around and make it your own. Just kind of saute those up. Like I said, once you hit the spoon to the little circles or if they don't come apart, you can just separate them. But it's gonna give a nice, kind of a nice light onion flavor. Let those saute for a minute. So then if you look at that, so then we're going to add mushrooms. So it's your favorite mushroom, whatever you, whatever you do, the button mushrooms look the best. Um, this time I was going to do portobello, um, but they didn't have, they didn't look good. So like they'd been in the store a little too long. So what I did is I got the button mushrooms and then I just quartered. So I just wiped them down and then I quartered them up. So the nice thing about it is I'm not a mushroom fan. I, I will make things with mushrooms as long as they're ground up, but Jerry loves mushrooms. So I will be eating everything around it and he'll eat the mushrooms. And so then I can, now they're big quartered, so I can actually find them. So mushrooms are not one of those uh, things that I like. So if I made this pie just for myself, I would leave the mushrooms out and I would add all the vegetables. So it'd almost be like a, a pot pie type of a thing. That's the way I would do it. So what did everybody say for recipes? That well, they, that's the they thing. They're saying traditional Easter meal, but I don't know what that is. Yeah. Here's one. Ham, mashed potatoes, carrots, peas, asparagus, not super fancy. Poor pigs. When did pigs become, you know, pigs are the target for Easter, I guess, and turkeys are the target for Thanksgiving. Yep. I remember way before, you know, Jared, I'll, I'll throw out some, some dirt on us and stuff before we were, you know, became plant-based and healthy and everything else. It was always the honey baked hams, you know, they'll go to the store and stand in line with all these people and buy one. That's what we did years and years and years ago. Well, you know, they make a tofurkey for Thanksgiving. Can they make a, like a, the equivalent in ham? I, you know, like a, you know what I mean? I know there's stores now. So I know that there's, I've seen restaurants and they've like, I've been on um, diners, drive-ins and dives. So I've seen restaurants where they're making all kinds of like vegan 
vegan meat and things like that, where they've, you know, they've done the ham, they've done the corned beef and everything. I know it's loaded with a lot of oils and things to, to be able to get that texture, but it's interesting. I see everything. Like you go to the stores now and it's like, you know, the whole section used to be a little, you know, little boxes of tofu and a couple other things. And now it's like, there's like deli slices and I mean, you name it, it's out there. And then all, all the beyond beef. And I'm not saying that it's the healthy things, but there's tons of that out there. Stores are now starting to carry it because I think people are starting to ask for it. All right. Beyond so leek sauteing up. They smell really good. Too bad we didn't have, like as uh, Chef Emerald used to say, smell a vision. I wish. That would be nice. So a leek is like in, like in the alum family, right? Like in the onion and mm -hmm. garlic family. Yeah. But it's definitely like a lot of people are like, well, what does it, you know, what does it taste like? And it's, it's definitely taste. You know, it's got the, and I'll just grab a piece. It's definitely got the flavor of a really light um, onion flavor, but it's a really nice flavor. So it's not overpowering. Like sometimes if you get the onions right now, they tend to be, they tend to be a little bit overpowering. Not these, these are really nice. But like I said, stay, stay away from the really thick, um, the really thick green part, because what will end up being is really chewy. You'll just sit there and chew on it. So one thing I have seen people do though, and I haven't done it just because I've, you know, I use leeks every once in a while, but not all the time, is they will take this and dehydrate it, and then they grind it up, and they just have basically like leek powder. And I'm like, well, that's good. It's like kale, you know, kale stem powder and leek powder and things like that, so they can just add it to their soups for taste and not have any waste. That's cool. Yeah. It's got to have the big dehydrators in your house, though. So I have one in the basement. All right, so now we're gonna add, we're gonna add the mushrooms. So the mushrooms are all quartered up. And this is one of the, this is a pound. So this is one of the big boxes of mushrooms. So you can get in the store, you're gonna get the little eight ounce, got the 16 ounce. So that's, that's everything that's covered up here. Then we've got the herbs. So, so dried mixed herbs, you could actually use like the Italian spices. So we've got, you know, savory spice here in town and they, they ship everywhere. They have like the Italian herbs. So they have a lot of the different flavors that you would want within them. You could use that. Or if you have like all your different spices, I started out, I would say when I first started, probably when Jerry and I met, but probably even before that, I probably had like five, six spices. Cause that's what I grew up with. And now I probably have over 250 spices. So anything and everything and extra, you know, I can keep everything full. I use a lot of spices now, which is really good. I don't overspice things, but just enough where it gives you the flavor. So in here, I've got a teaspoon of, and this is everything, rosemary, thyme, and basil. It smells so good. And so the, co the cool thing about it is you get rosemary here, rosemary roast potatoes. Mm. So add those in. And this is another thing that you could, you know, you could mix up. You could say, you know what? I'm not a big fan of rosemary, but I like basil and I like thyme and I'd like to put something else in there. So think about when you're making this. So maybe you make it the first time this way. But then when you, when you come around and you decide that um, let me just do this, uh, you want to, you want to add some other things to it, like the little roast potatoes or something like that, add different spices to it. So you could almost make it like Mediterranean. You could make it Spanish. You know, there's all kinds of things that you could do with this pie. So if your vegetable broth burns off a little bit and it did just add a little bit of vegetable broth because, or water. And the reason why is because your mushrooms they're gonna put out a lot of moisture. So you wanna make sure you don't have too much moisture. You just mix it up real quick and then I'll show what it looks like. Got leaks hanging on. Already starting to look good. It's got a really nice it got a nice um, a smell to it and stuff because you get that rosemary and thyme. Thyme was not one of a spice and stuff that I used for a long time, but now I love it in soups and, and all kinds of different dishes. It just gives that extra pop and I love it. Dill's another one. I use dill in lots of different things. Love anything that's like a potato soup with lots and lots of dill. So what's your favorite? So Chef AJ, what's your favorite um, dishes and stuff for Passover then? 
gosh, I don't even celebrate Passover, but what <laughs> the same thing doesn't matter what the holiday, but you know, I did love something called Hero, not Hiroset. Yeah. Hiroset. It's this thing you put on the matzah and it's like, it's basically, well, they make it with wine, but you don't have to. And it's, it's like shredded apples and cinnamon and walnuts. And it's really good. That sounds good. It's really I think anything good. with walnuts and cinnamon, all those kind of things is good. Yeah. Really Oops. good. So I'm talking so much, I forgot the garlic. So let me add the garlic in. I mean, even when I wasn't vegan, I never really liked gefilte fish. It was so like, it had this gelatinous weird stuff on it. And, you know, I don't know. The only thing I really liked was something called simis. And I hope somebody will make it on my show. It's a simis in Yiddish means a big deal because it was a big deal to make and it did have meat in it. But what was good about it was the roasted carrots and parsnips and, and, and it had prunes in it. And it was really delicious. Yeah. Parsnips, rutabaga, all those, like if you just do like chunks of, of roasted vegetables and you've got, you know, big chunks of onions and all that, there's nothing better. I mean, especially when they get almost like caramelized and you just, and they're like candy to me, I think they're the, some of the best things out there. So yeah, I love any of those kind of things. All right. So I'm just going to do this for just a couple of minutes, just kind of saute up. If your mushrooms don't give you a lot of moisture and sometimes they don't, then feel free to always just add a little bit more vegetable broth. Kelly, what's the favorite vegetable of a urologist? My favorite vegetable, what? What's the favorite vegetable of a, uro of a urologist? Let me think about this for a second and I'm probably, I won't get it. I don't know. Leek. <laughs> <laughs> but -um -um. You are so good about having all those little, those little things like that. I, somebody tells me a joke or something. It's like, right gone. That's funny. Love it. Leaks. <laughs> Leaks and depends. Well, that would okay. be a good answer. Depends. Yeah. Put that Ooh, there. Yeah. Colleen's mentioning the green bean casserole. Remember that green bean casserole? Oh, yes. We used to make with a can of Campbell's condensed cream of mushroom soup and they put the fried onions on it. That was delicious. Yes. And you can still, you can actually still make the green bean casserole because there's, um, there's like, you can get the, just like the mushroom soup that doesn't have, it's like mushrooms, but it doesn't have all the milk and products and things like they used to. So they have a couple brands out there that you can do that. Or you can actually just chop up your own mushrooms and make this kind of like the little bit of the white sauce or the bechamel sauce with it. Same thing. And then you don't have to do the fried onions. You can take onions and coat them like with panko and put them in the oven and bake them. So you can get really much the same type of thing. I've actually made it a couple of times for, I think I've done it like Thanksgiving and, and I think it was more Thanksgiving time and stuff a couple of times because Jerry's, you know, back in the, the days, that was one of his favorite things to eat. So you can make your own. You just have to, you know, do a little bit more chopping with your mushrooms or buy them already sliced and, and away you go. So it's not too bad, but definitely not all the fried stuff. And sometimes they, sometimes I remember the green bean casserole. I went, I think I was like, way. this is like 15, 16 years ago. Somebody put bacon in it too. Or like their scalloped potatoes had layers of bacon. And I was like, oh, that's too much. But a lot of people like that. They're starting to cook down. I'll show you real quick. Really nice. Thyme rosemary smell. Ready? All right. So we'll add the green peas. So these are just regular frozen green peas. They hold up really well in just about any dish. I would say that every time I make like a, a vegetable stew or anything, first ingredients usually is peas that go in it. So peas and corn, that's, I think that's my upbringing from Kansas. It's peas and corn. That seems like was the main, I think those were probably the main vegetables we had all the time. Once in a while, it would be uh, canned carrots or those, what is it? Those French green beans in the can, which I can't, can't handle anymore. But mine favorites are like the frozen type of, of peas and carrots. Let me grab everything else off of here. Let's get this out of the way. All right. So the the let's go ahead and make why this is cooking here. We're gonna go ahead and make the the pistachio relish. So let me grab the dish. So raw pistachios. So just chopped up. And a lot of times and stuff, a lot of people will be like, "Ooh, you know, you look at the, you look at pistachios and you'll, and that's, you know, it's a higher fat type of a nut. So if you don't want to do pistachios, do almonds, do, you know, whatever nut that you have. And if you have it, especially if you keep them like in the freezer, just grab something out and maybe do a mixture of them. But pistachios, 
you know, it used to be one of those ones that's like $7.99 a pound for raw pistachios that are in the shell. And then it's like $18.99 a pound for ones that are already shelled. And you're always like, well, I'll go get the, I'll get the ones. And then you, but then you sit there and you're, you know, trying to get the pistachio out of the shell. It's a lot of work. So, you know, definitely buy, because you're not going to get that, use that many. Just go ahead and buy them right out of the shell so you can find them. So just add those in. And that's something I have to keep away from Jerry because Jerry loves pistachios in any form. So if he would have known that these were sitting here, he would have been picking at them already. So we have to keep them away. So one thing on the carrots. So I went to look for the carrots, the, the rainbow carrots, and they usually have the really long green stems with them. Like you can get those little carrots. None in the stores anywhere. So I'm not going to be using the, the carrot tops and stuff in this. Um, so we're just going to make it without, uh, you know, the kind of the parsley carrot tops just because we couldn't find any. So, but we'll do everything else. So then I've got mint leaves. So fun little mint leaves. These, this is something that you can grow out in your yard. So instead of having to purchase it, um, but be careful with mint out in your yard because you're like, oh, you know, mint and basil and everything. Mint will start here and then it goes here, here, and it's all over your yard. So, so I'm just going to add in some mint leaves. So I would recommend mint in a pot away from any ground. And if you have extra mint, there's so much you could do with it. So you could do like, you know, mint water, mint teas, mint everything. So we're not going to use a lot of mint for this. So definitely going to be using the mint for other things. And you could also, if you do a fruit salad for Easter, so if you got, you know, you want to have like a, um, a fruit, like a great fruit salad for everybody to start with, you could use the mint in that too. Great ways to get rid of it. But in fresh water on the table, mint leaves floating in it, beautiful. Couple slices of pineapple, great water. All right, so we've got the mint leaves in there. Then we've got the scallions. So lots of greenery. All right, and then we've got lemon zest. I gotta go find my microplane. My microplane has disappeared that I absolutely loved. I think I took it for a class. And so I think it's hidden in all my utensils downstairs somewhere. So that'll be my job today is to go look for it. That okay, lemon zest. All right, those are just about done. And then lemon. Get my fancy little, never had one of these before. Bought them for a class one time, my cooking classes. And then I kept one off to the side. These are really nice. Love these things. All right. So got a tablespoon of lemon juice. So that's about a half of a large lemon. This, same thing. Slice it up, put it in with the mint, put it in with some pineapple, put it in the water, no waste. Or if you have a, gla a grape flavoring for like, I say you have water and then a grape flavoring for your drink that doesn't have sugar and things like that in it, add some lemon, squeeze some lemon into it. And it's like a, it's like a grape lemonade. Wonderful. One of my favorites. Okay. Not going to add the black pepper since I already added black pepper to the carrots. Here's a question, and it's a good question from Susie. How do you keep everything warm and have it all out at the same time? I struggle with serving big family dinners, and this year we are hosting. How do you keep everything warm? That's that's the hard part. So it's so there's there's different ways to do that. So they have um, so like the, there's the crock pot family that has you know, like these different things that you can, they're like um, warmers that you can put together, which are really nice. But then the problem is, is you got to store it somewhere. So a lot of times what you end up doing is thinking about like getting, making sure that things that are on your table are ready to go, things that you don't have to heat up. And then the last minute and stuff kind of bring things out. But the only other, like I said, only thing is, is you, you get some of those warmer plates um, or making sure that if you've got something, make sure it's covered. So like putting the lid back on it, which keeps it warm, but it's tough. It's especially if you've got a really, really big family, you end up having things that are that are not as warmed up. So 
But I've seen those little crock pot things. They're really cool because you can put, you know, different things on them and just have it like here on your counter. So like your gravies and your things like that that need to keep warm. And then you can kind of put it like in the middle of the table. People can help themselves. And those are really fun. But like I said, you have to store them somewhere. There's also like little fondue dishes um, that you could do also. I have one that that a lady gave me and it's probably about that big and it has a nice lid on it. So if I do something um, like I've made like a, one time I made like a cheese sauce for, um, that was of course potatoes and carrots and red bell peppers and all that uh, mixed together for, and I put jalapenos in it for like one of our um, cooking classes. Like we had a community dinner and that I just kept warm in a, in a um, just kind of like a chafing dish type of a thing. So chafing dishes are good too, but you gotta buy them and store them. Okay, so there's the relish. So really pretty. So you've got kind of the purple of the pistachios. You've got, you know, all the greens, you've got the lemons, you've got the mint. So you've got a little bit of sweet, a little bit of sour. So the, all that umami, all those good flavors and stuff that that's what we're going to put on the carrots to decorate them. So I'm going to put that off to the side. Um, just kind of give it a quick stir every once in a while, just to make sure that lemons um, kind of massaged in. But other than that, I'm going to move this off to the side. All right. Now I'm going to do the white sauce. So we've got, so what we're gonna do is we're going to, so if you're kind of following along on the directions, so we got a little bit of vegetable broth. Then we're gonna add the flour. So this is just a whole wheat flour. Grab your whisk, always make sure you have your whisk ready because anything you do with flour and moisture, you've gotta make sure that you, that you stir it up really well. So let's do, stir that up. Just a little bit at a time. You could also add it all into a mason jar and shake it up. That's what my mom used to do when she was making the roux for the gravy. This is always good underarm work. So who needs Pilates, right? When you got a little bit of flour making a roux. If it gets really thick, Add just a little bit more vegetable broth because then we're going to add a little bit of moisture to it with the milk. So non-dairy milk. If it starts getting too thick, just do what I'm doing. Just take it right off the burner. Keep mixing it in. Last of the mixing in. Okay, now we're gonna add in the non-dairy milk. So I'm just using soy milk. You could use milk, milk, oat milk, almond milk, cashew milk, everything and anything out there. Make your own. Cause I know Chef AJ, don't you have one of the Nutri-Milk machines? Yep, you can make oat milk, you can make just about everything. Yeah. Those are really cool machines. So since I'm using the whole wheat flour, you know, white sauce, if you use the white flour, like a regular white flour, um, like Bob's Met Red Mill and stuff, you're gonna get more of a white color to the sauce. But since I'm using the, the whole wheat, I'm getting a little bit more beige, which is okay. That's all mixed in. Okay, we'll get this heated up. So this is going to be our thickener. So this is going to be where, so like when you make like a, a pot pie or something like that, you have that really creamy sauce on the inside. That's what we're making here. This is what's going to go in the mushrooms. All right, so let me pull this off to the side. So puff pastry, there is vegan puff pastry out there. It's, you have to find it. It's usually by Pepperidge Farm. And then you can also, if you can't find it, um, the other thing that you can do is you can just put it, um, you can just put like a, you know, make your own like whole wheat crust and then put that on top. So it comes in little, comes in little packs like this. So one of the things, depending on, because I'm gonna put it on a pie, sh pie sheet. And it's actually rectangle. If you think about it, you've got edges where it'll mix and, or where it will set and other edges where it won't. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to take my rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, you can actually just, you know, you can grab like a, like a cup and then just kind of roll it like that. But I'm going to actually, since it has a lot of the flour on this side, I'm going to flip it really quick. And then I'm just going to give it a nice roll because I want it a little bit bigger than with the size that it comes. So this one is actually going to go back in the freezer. I don't need to. And the nice thing about it too, is the more you roll it out, then you don't get those big old clumps of like dough. And that's something that I don't prefer either. So it's kind of nice to, to not have the big chunks of dough once it puffs up. It's kind of flipped all sides. And so then, much better. All right. How's your little doggy? What was that? I'm sorry. How's your little doggy? Doing good. Georgie's great. My little Havanese. Does Jerry work at home? Do what? I'm sorry. Does Jerry work at home? Yes, and I do too now, though. Oh, because I was going to say, because Havanese are, they call them Velcro, because Bailey's half Havanese, and they call them Velcro dogs, because they do not like to be out of your sight very long. She loves it. And it's like, you know, it's, you know, animals, they age so fast. And it's, you know, it's like so much faster than us. And so it's like you, you know, it seems like that 15 years, 16 years, 17 years, you know, however, however long that you can get to live with your, you know, the babies, as I call them is so nice. Um, and so to be able to be home now and working from home. So when they gave us that choice after COVID and said, hey, would you like, I think 99% of the staff said working from home. So it's so nice to be able to spend time with her. And I also got Penny, the um, Norwich Terrier. It's nice to be able to spend time with them and be able to just like hang out and things because you just see like the changes, but then you get to see everything with them versus them, you know, sleeping at home. And then you come home, they're excited. And then about three hours later, you're going to bed type of thing. So I love it. Yeah, it's great. Kathy Hester is in the house. She has a show here on the first Wednesday of the month. And she says there's a vegan gluten-free puff pastry by Char, but it's hard to find. Yeah. Yeah, you can find, um, usually if you can't find them in the stores, you can find them on Amazon. So that's sometimes the places I've gone is Amazon to get things. Um, just because it's the, like I said, it's the whole supply chain that's still going on that one time you can find it in the grocery store next time you can't. So, so now I'm going to just add the nutmeg. So nutmeg is always good. in like, you know, bechamel sauces and white sauces, it gives just a little bit of kick of flavor and you're kind of like, you'll taste it and you'll be like, and people will try it and they'll be like, what is that flavor? And it's usually nutmeg. Just add that in. And then, uh, so just a nice, so it's not thick, thick, but it's nice enough and stuff that it's creamy. So there we go. And the nutmeg smells, it almost smells like something you could drink, like you're drinking like a latte or something with the nutmeg in it. All right. So. I'm going to plug this because I'm not going to need it. Get the noise gone. Add the sauce into it. Add a little water to the dish, the pan. All right. Peas. Don't forget the peas. And then I'll show you what it looks like before I add it in. And I put this together. I get leaks that wrap around the spoons. Okay. So if you think about it, it looks just like a pot pie mixture before you're getting ready to put it in and make the pot pie. All right. So. Put that in there. And see the green peas? They just add such a pretty color. 
It's like spring, Easter. As long as they're green, there's nothing worse than gray peas. Have you ever seen those? Uh-uh. No, it's like when people cook them too long, they turn gray. Oh, yeah. My mom used to do that. She would do the, um, oh, what am I trying to say? She would make it and she'd sit there and she'd put the, like the cream peas. And then it would end up being like this, like the weird color. And then it would be, it would be so mushy. Ugh. So this is where you can actually take this off. But I want to get this in the oven. So if you've got the corner pieces, just kind of go in. Take those off. You could actually use those for something else. Keep them in the freezer, use them another time. Even it out. And so then kind of go in. You can do the, the little pie thing. If you don't, you know, if your grandmother didn't teach you or your mom didn't teach you this, then, you know, as far as like pinching the crust, then just use a fork, go all the way around. It's just as pretty either way. My mom used to make homemade apple pies and cherry pies, and we had cookies all the time. If you got a little extra dough, just roll it up underneath. You could actually put this in a cast iron pan and serve it in the cast iron pan if you wanted to do that. Okay, so there's the crimping. And then what you wanna do is you wanna do a crisscross. So you've got a knife that you're cutting through the You're almost doing it like makes it look like an, uh, a lattice apple pie. Have you made your, your uh, apple pie since? I make my apple pie all the time. I love it. It is good. Yep. And this oh. is to give it to where the puff pastry can actually rise and get all nice and crispy. But then you've got all the steam of the vegetables that are going to come through also. So you want to make sure you have that. Okay, so now I'm gonna get this in the oven, all ready to go. Well, actually one other thing. So I don't know what happened to my whisk <laughs> or my actually, so I'm just gonna, not my whisk, but my, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, what is it called? I'm blanking. What are you trying to think of a, the word for a whisk? Uh, pastry brush, duh. <laughs> I had to look it up on my recipe. So I don't know what happened to my pastry brush either. I think it went to the one of my cooking classes. So I'm just going to use a spoon and I'm just putting some of the soy milk on top for browning. Used to be like, you know, a lot of times and stuff, people would put like an egg mixture. So that just kind of keeps a little bit soft. And there we go. Going to go in the oven. It's sticky fingers. Lavanda saying hot plates are a great way to keep things warm. Yes. You got to have a lot of hot plates or you got to have smaller dishes. My mom used to have ones that were about this big. And it's the same thing, though. It's the same thing like your, your crock pot um, things. You've got to have a place to store it. So if you got a big basement, great. You know, put it in with your Christmas decorations and everything else. But those are really nice. But these two, like, so the corners that I cut off here, you know, if you had, you know, some different vegetables or you had a little bit extra because you made too much you could actually roll it up and kind of make almost like little uh, pot pies or empanadas. So there's something to do with the corners, but I'm gonna put this off to the side. Put these away. All right, let's check our time. I'm gonna get turn the oven up a little bit. So it took a little bit longer. Do you have the Ninja Creamy, Kelly? I don't. I have been looking at those because I saw some of your shows that that they were offering yes. those. They, um, they have another, there's another 12 hours for a 22% discount, which takes it down about 50 bucks. It's really cool because they have a big size now, which I appreciate because the little one only made a pint. This makes a pint and a half. Nice. I've seen it. We've seen it on Jerry and I've watched it because, you know, anything like, you know, mango sorbet or any of those kind of things like that, we love. Um, the only thing that that you know, because I had the first, remember those, the, the Ninja blenders, the little ones like this, I had one of the first one, and I think it only lasted like, I don't know, a month or something before. So I was, it's kind of like one of those ones It's like, well, do I get it? Do I not get it? But I've heard really, really good things about it. So you're saying it's great. 
I love it. And Kathy Hester, who's watching, loves it, developed a whole course around it. What I like about it is, number one, it's the only machine that so far makes it scoopable and not soft serve. And two, like if you don't finish, you put the pint back and then you can re-spin it, whereas you can't do that with the Vitamix or anything else. So what have you made? So what have you made in it? Well, I'm pretty boring. So I do a lot of one ingredient things. I do banana. I do mango. I do, oh, you can put in applesauce and it makes apple sorbet. Uh, What I like to do is I like to make my date shake recipe and put in a little, a coffee powder that's not really coffee. It's called samey. And then it tastes like chocolate ice cream. I'll make that. I'll make some of Kathy Hester's recipes. But usually I just do, you know, oh, the can of pineapple. You take one can of unsweetened pineapple Dole or any brand and you put it in and you make Dole Whip. It's, 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 I've heard that. It's pretty that's- extraordinary how easy it was. So I tend to make the easy ones. No, it's not like a Vitamix at all. I mean, a Vitamix is a great blender, but it does not make scoopable, realistic ice cream. Trust yeah. me. I have seen that. I've seen, I saw that where I think that's the one that was like, Ooh, that sounds really good. Like the pineapple and just putting it right in there, you know, and mixing it up and all that. So I used to have one of those, you remember those old, the ice cream makers, not the, not the ones where you sat there and, and done this, but what was it by Breville? And you had to freeze the container and then, yeah. and then it would just sit there and kind of spin and make the yeah. ice cream. This takes two minutes and 17 seconds once, once the container's frozen. So it's pretty that's awesome. nice. That one, the Breville would take an hour. I and I, you know, and then it's like, oh, I was going to make something. I forgot to put the container in the freezer and then you took freezer space and all that. So yeah, that's nice to know. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, Stephanie says, could you freeze it at this point and just take it out and bake it at a later date? Yes, you sure could. And I'm assuming you're meaning the pie. <laughs> yeah, I think so. That's when the, the it came in. Put that back there. All right, carrots, roasted carrots. Let me grab get these out and you can buy um like i was looking for the the little roasted carrots because like a lot of times and stuff you'll find them that are about this big but like i said in in um supply chain not so much this time i kind of mix the colors a little bit you see the there's already a little bit of so you got the little bit caramelization of the of the carrots Hot. I'm gonna keep them all together. This one's my favorite. Look at that. With the purple on it. It's beautiful. Oh yeah, Jackie's talking about borscht. Uh, some people eat it for Passover or Easter. I, we haven't had borscht on this show, I don't think. You know what borscht is, right? Beet soup. Beets. Cold. <laughs> and it's cold. It's cold. Oh, you don't like beets. <laughs> Yeah, some people don't like beets. My husband's one of them. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. You're your husband and I could hang out because anytime anybody puts beets in anything, like if they're like, oh, roasted vegetables at, you know, in restaurants or something like that, I'm like, have beets in it. And they're like, oh, no. And I'm like, the minute you put them in front of me, I can smell beets from a mile away. I'm like, oof. Beets and um, cilantro is another wow. one. I'm not a cilantro fan. Neither is Jerry, though. The last, only the last two. Penny, our Norwich Terrier, love carrots. Wait, you have so, two different. I've only seen the Havanese. Yeah, she's she's around here somewhere. I think she's sleeping. Okay, so you got the roasted carrots. Then you put the relish. I always like to add a little bit of microgreens because they're so good for you. There's that. Let me grab the potatoes. This is a veritable feast, my friend. I'm hoping I can get... Didn't realize I took as long to get everything going. So there's the roast, rosemary roasted potatoes, really hot. All right, I'm gonna do it a different way. Let me grab a big spoon. 
the glass dish is like blistering hot. I'm dumping them everywhere. They smell so good. Hot, hot dish. All right, chives. Always pull out the ones that are you don't need. Dishes always, they're always so much prettier when you add greenery to them, especially when you're getting ready to serve them. Why are chives so expensive? Have you ever noticed that? They are, and they shouldn't be because, you know, if you ever grow them in your backyard, that's another one. They're just like, they're just like um, mint. The minute you start one plant, and they're absolutely beautiful. I bought some, this is our other house um, before we moved here, but our other house had, and they had, you know, the big purple blossoms on them. And they're so pretty when they bloom out. Problem is, is when that blossom dries, the seeds go, and then all of a sudden in your yard everywhere, remember Jerry in our yard, we had purple chives everywhere. I was, I was constantly ripping them up and then I'd freeze them or keep them or, or something like that. But every time I turned around, I had chives everywhere. So I don't know why. I, I don't know if it's because they just don't last very long or what's going on with them, but they're really hard to find too. There's, that's another one that is supply chain. The other thing that I'm going to add just for pretty is I'm going to add, have some extra grape slices and then I'm going to check the pie. I always like to, when you make food, it's all about that. I always call it eye candy. If you get if it looks good and people are like, ooh, and they want to dig into it, they will. There we go. How okay. can people find out about all your cooking classes? And are they instructional or are they hands-on? So we've got, so it depends. So we've got, we actually are in a um, community now. So we've been going, we've been having a, a clubhouse and they actually, we have cook with me and then I have demo. So demo is kind of getting everybody ready for, you know, this is what the, what the food's going to look like. And it was kind of funny because uh, a lot of people said, you know, we're getting to the age where we don't want to cook anymore. So it's nice to come and, and come to your classes and get that, that homemade meal, but they are all are on our meetup site. So it's um, Denver healthy vegan cooking classes and, and it's, uh, it's, it's meetup.com. And then it's also on my site, which is plant-based kitchenista. And so we have classes and we also do our zoom classes where it's just like what I'm doing here twice a month. All right, let me grab and see what the chai is looking like. Oh, it's got about another minute and then it's ready. So now I got chives coming out of the box and chives, that's one thing. And maybe that's why, I don't know why they're, but like I said, you can get their dime a dozen to buy, um, but they are very expensive, like $2.99 a box. So I'll have to look it up and see why they're so expensive. It must be a supply chain thing. I'm tired of supply chain stuff. I don't know about the rest of you guys. That's just a, that's just what they say now, even if it's not true. That's like, oh, it's a supply chain. They do that. It's like, well, we can't get it at the grocery store, so we're going to have to charge you more. I don't know if all of you guys have noticed and stuff going to the grocery store now. I mean, it's like you walk out and everything, of course, is, you know, $200 for a basket. And you're like, okay, well, I got home and I, that's, I still got to go buy stuff next week. It's crazy, the amount of cost of things. It's a lot. All right starting to drip. So one of the things I'd probably recommend because I'm just, it's doing it here on in mine that what I would recommend is, see if that's cool enough though. I would recommend probably putting it on a tray unless you want to keep you know, clean up some drippings in your oven, which nobody likes to clean ovens. Probably could use about another five minutes, but I know I don't want to keep you longer. 
We don't mind if, if we can see the finished pro- product. Yeah, it's really, really close. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna, cause I just spilled some. So if I lean over, I'm gonna have mushroom pie all over my vest. So get that out of the way. Okay. So. Roasted carrots, pistachio relish. Doesn't that look beautiful? Yeah, and delicious. <laughs> Rosemary roasted potatoes. Like I said, these are like poppers. These are so good. You just grab, so if you just grab one, look at that. And the rosemary is infused in there. Mm, So good. Who needs butter, sour cream when you have these? Okay, last. There is, so this is the mushroom leek and pea pie. So like I said, I'll probably put it in for just a little bit longer, but there it is ready to go. Doesn't that look great? And not so only if you want to great. add for beauty, and of course I threw these back over here. Will you serve it? You also, if you wanted to add some decorations, like when you were making, so back when we were making all the um, the pies and things like that, you could have added like little leaf designs on it. Make it real pretty that way. All right, there's my mess. So mushroom leek and pea pie. So it's got a puff pastry top. So it's gonna be just like, it's just gonna be just like a pot pie. And then you've got your roasted, so roasted rainbow carrots with a with a relish. I put a little bit of, of um, grapes in there just because they're pretty and it adds the purple. And I know you said purple was your favorite color. And then I've got the rosemary roasted potatoes. So this is going to be our Easter feast, but actually for now, it's going to be our lunch. So Jerry's uh, salivating already and, and going to figure out like what's what's his and then what he's going to hide in the back of the refrigerator so he can eat it again tomorrow. That's what he does. I, you know, people don't realize unless they've taken your class or eaten your food, what an extraordinary talent you are, because I've tasted your food and you make just like a simple sweet potato. Like, I don't know, you are magical. You're like an undiscovered talent because I know you have a full time job and you don't get to promote yourself like other people. But I want people to know that if they live anywhere near you, just they've got to try your food because you're you. so you're 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 just one of the best chefs of your food is so good. Thank you. But it's so thank you so much. I've eaten it. I mean, I'm not saying I'm, I'm, I mean, you made me like some I mean, even you're like you gave me some cherry tomatoes. It's like everything that you touch turns to delicious. I remember we were we were picking you up at the airport and we had a bag of cherry tomatoes. We're like, here you go. And you're like, I'm going to eat these on the way back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were your, gone. Your food is so good. I just wish, yeah. you know, I wish you didn't have to work so you could just like open a restaurant know, or, yeah. or a food delivery service, you know, seriously, you're such a talented chef. So Thank I hope you. people try the recipes because you really know what you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate it. I so yeah. much appreciate that. Makes yeah. me feel good. Yeah. And well, you are that good. And we know that the next couple of shows, you've already talked about what you're going to make. You've got an Italian theme coming up and the, I forget what the second Thai one. food. Yep. Thai food coming up. Yep. And Jerry gets to benefit from all of it. He's a very lucky man. He is just, he does not know how lucky he is. I mean, I, I mean, I want a wife like you, you know, honestly, <laughs> I, seriously, that would be, the, everybody needs one of you. Thank you so much, Kelly. I really enjoy watching. Oh, you're you. welcome. Yeah. I actually had somebody in one of my cooking classes said, if I win the lottery, would you come live in my house and do all the cooking? And a Jerry's like, well, what about me? And she goes, no, just Kelly. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That is hilarious. I was well, like, thank- hmm. Yeah, it's really because I, I mean, I, I mean, I just was so happy that you wanted a monthly slot because your recipes are so delicious. Thank you. Yeah, well, I enjoy being with you. It's, it's always a lot of fun. Yeah, that's it. Do you think you'll ever do a conference again? You know, I know you produced a couple of those wonderful plant-based summits. We've talked about it. We have, we have to we definitely have to figure out because I mean, you know, you know, you know, just as well as we do, the conferences are very, very expensive. And so, you know, everybody's just starting to travel and those things like that. So you know, I always would, I always, cause I was getting ready to start that, um, you know, where it's all cooking conference. It was like a two day. That's but, really um, difficult. That COVID hit, couldn't do that. Yeah. So those are you know, it's funny that, that you said that because I was, I, I participated in the very last 
what was it called? Celebrity Chef Weekend that Dr. McDougall did in 2009. And that was an extraordinary weekend, but it is so hard when you do that. But talk to me offline because I agree with you having done 20 conferences, but I know a way you can do it that won't be as expensive, but you know, it, you won't be able to do it as extravagantly as you have, but I have an idea okay. for you. If you want to love it, you mean jingle? I'd love it. Because you are just like, you're so good at what you do. Thank you so much. And thanks Thank you. for helping out. Thank you. Bye. Love you guys. Right. Take care. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for Goodbye Lucas with Dr. Brooke Goldner. Have a great day, everyone. And don't forget, you have until midnight to get that Ninja Creamy for almost